Hey, Chris Lipe here with the isolated vocal tracks for Lane Staley, Allison Chains, Man in the Box. This is a fantastic study in subtle effects and vocal placement, believe it or not. As we go through these tracks, remember that imitation is not the point. Experimentation and learning what our voices do as we take inspiration from what Lane does is the point. And we can take inspiration from the way things were produced by getting an extra good look at the isolated tracks. And we can also take inspiration from what he does vocally. But don't set yourself up for failed expectations by trying something and then going, ah, I don't sound anything like him. It doesn't matter if you don't sound anything like him. What matters is that you're trying things based on what you hear in his vocal performance. And that's what I'm going to be doing. If you'd like more help with your voice and you'd like me to come alongside you as your vocal coach, the best place to start is by clicking the link below and joining my free voice course. All right, let's get into it. Yeah. Okay, there's a lot to unpack even in just these first two intro pieces. First of all, I love hearing the headphone bleed uh, whenever, you know, whenever I do in these isolated tracks. So cool. Or, or maybe that speaker bleed. I'm not sure, but there's a lot of it and it doesn't matter. He's highly compressed in terms of audio compression, but let's study his tone. This is an exaggerated version of what he does in other places. This is not, uh, he is, has this exaggerated, uh, uh, it's not that much, but it, it is some of that. Uh, uh, also notice his subtle use of H. Uh, 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 it's not really a crack. Uh, 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 uh. Also, he closes these off. Ow. 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 With that nice vibrato. And what ends up happening is he he's shaping, dynamically shaping this phrase all the way through. That's very, very nasal. Very bright. He's saying, but he's whining it in this middle chest. And then he closes the phrase with, Again, very nasal, but he drops his larynx. So he starts with a raised larynx, and then he drops his larynx a bit and swallows the, the end of that phrase. This is really important. And if we put our voices in a similar environment with effects, Notice on lanes, even though there's this subduedness to it, he still has a hard onset at the beginning. Uh, 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 it's not, uh, it doesn't slide into it. So I captured that with mine. Because these are lazily and imperfectly doubled, we're taking all of the different intonation problems, or they're not really even problems, but we're taking all those together. We have this nice blend, and these are equal doubles. We don't have one lead and one other one. And even some of the exaggerated things that I do with my voice, and same with Lane's, they end up sounding cool because of the differences in the double. And we'll talk a little bit more about the, the effects that are helping to, to move this along here in a little bit. But let's listen on. Buried. 
let's hone in on this awesome way that he ramps up. There's an arc to everything that he sings. And the man in the box. You hear how it grows? I am the man in the box. Box. Doesn't have quite the exhale that I put up the end of that, but. I am the man. I am the man. He grows with it. This isn't just, I am the man. He doesn't have one intensity, and his vibrato is, is amazing. His vibrato doubled just sounds incredible. Buried in my pit. Buried in. And he gets that little bit of grit up at the top there. Buried in my pit. Listen to how in is. Be. Be is very bright. Be. Be. He almost, he drops his larynx there, and then... In, in my pit. My pit. My pit. He is dynamically changing his resonance all the time. In my... In, lower larynx, still nasal, but placed further back. In my pit. Hey... And using some some compression there. He doesn't know that he's using compression. He just knows how it feels to dynamically move his resonance around. But let's also talk about, real quick, the effects, that delay that's helping propel these phrases forward. Listen to Pitt. In my pit. Very high feedback. What we've got going on here is... A reverb, we've got a couple different reverbs going on. First, we've got a room reverb, and you've seen me use this on other videos. If I get rid of this reverb, let's get rid of all of them real quick. Here is the room reverb first. Ah, we've got a decent amount of room reverb on it. Notice it has that reflective, sharp nature to the reverb. You definitely hear that in Lane's vocals. And then we've got another reverb, hey, hey, that's not being used so much on the lead vocals. It's a little longer. It's a hall reverb. Hey, hey. Same plug-in, just with different settings. But where this really, this hall reverb really comes into play is when we activate the delay. And you can hear that here on his track. Pit. You hear the reverb on the delay. So we have this mod delay three. I've used this before as well. And we are, we have a bit of a, a groove spread on it. So it sounds wider because each delay repeat is hitting at slightly different times on each side of the stereo field. We've band limited it a little bit, although we still want that ah, bright, high sort of sound. This is probably a little bit more full. And then we've put the reverb on the delay. Pit, 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 pit. Hear the depth that that has? So, moving forward, if I sing this line. Buried in my pit. Buried in my pit. Buried in my pit. We have that delay trail going on, that percussive delay. Moving on. Won't you? Come and save me. Okay, again, the dynamic resonance coupled, coupled with the doubling. Listen to how things change here. Won't you come? Won't is more open and relaxed. Won't you? 
And then he's he's swallowing that just a little bit. Whoa, if I'm really going to exaggerate it. Whoa, man. Ah, he's dropped the larynx. Ah, put more through his nose. And save me. This is good to do. Really exaggerate what he's doing so that you can find that medium. Won't you come and save me? Save me. We need to awaken that variety in our voice in order to discover that our tone is not static. Won't you come and save me? This is very theatrical. Even though he's relaxed, even though he's very subdued in his delivery, at the same time aggressive, this theatrical approach is going to help unlock the variance that we love so much in voices like his. Come and save me. Save me. Save me. Save me. Save me. So much difference between those two words. This is the key to interesting vocals right here. Save me. Ooh. Save me. Listen to the way that he puts that H in there. Save me. And slides up and then lets off that. Save, save me. Uh, awesome. Again, remember everything's double. So there's that extra texture like we talked about at the beginning. But let's talk about his grit. First of all, we got that oof, oof right before. I love that kind of thing. Feed my eyes, but he says fade. And then he plays with that vowel. That helps him place that grit. Listen to his variants here. He's a lot more broken up and a lot more nasal at the top there. Let's put some of that in. As opposed to maybe the more Cornellian way. The difference is nasality. That by placing it further back and allowing that air and pressure to move through my nasal passage more, I'm able to dial in my compression a little bit differently. No. And there's all sorts of ways that we can play with that to get a different balance. Fade! Fade! My! Fade! Jesus Christ! Same thing there with the vowels. Tries, tries, play with that nasality. I'll feed my eyes. It's good stuff.
cut. I'm the dog who gets beat. Gets beat. Beat, not beat. Beat, beat, er. There's a little bit of an er uh, surrounding those vowels. Er. We want to resist the urge to sing with a cupped tongue all the time. Er. And then have this be your tone. But if you're dynamically moving the resonance around, it's actually really great because you're not doing it out of tension and you're not stuck in one mode or one way to approach a note. I'm the dog who gets beat. That sounds great. I'm the dog who gets beat. Right? If I sing the whole line though, I'm the dog who gets beat. It doesn't work. So, don't pull on one little thread based on what you hear in his voice and think that he's always doing that. He's so powerful and so awesome because he's not always doing it. But he's doing it sometimes. Shove my nose in spit. Love that double. In spit. Spit. Holding back. Shove my nose in spit. Yeah. Won't Relaxed. You, you forward. Come and save me. Won't you? So if we were to have a forward meter, won't you come and save me? Moving that resonance forward and backward, his larynx up and down. Save me. There's almost another tone in there. It's so cool. There's, there's some throat, almost throat singing resonance happening there. It's not intentional, but it's awesome. And that is can be accessed by... Compression. Fade my eyes. You hear it? We're happening. We're we're almost phonating in two different areas of our throat. And I've done other videos talking about this some, but we are utilizing the false chord area of our neck, of our throat, to add compression in a certain way and feeling around it so that we get this harmonic response out of the note. It's really neat. Yeah! There it is. Yeah! Some tritones in there. There's some fourths and fifths. He's doing the same thing here. I feel my My eyes in my eyes. Always loved that line. That just putting that in our voices and experimenting with it. In my eyes. Notice he he has that uh, that tonal blending here that based off of compression, but this is more of like a, a grit or a rasp. So if we were to experiment with those intentionally, let's start with a mild squeeze, mild false chord squeeze based on compression. Fade! There's that middle section, this We've got that uh, going on. Fade! And then we've got this. more consistent, right? So we start cleaner. In my eyes. And then bring some of those in and out. The variance that you can get and the interest, that's why his stuff is so cool because there's lots of different little subtle distortion things happening that he's letting happen. If we understand how each one of these things feels, and again, if you want more help with this, click the link below and join my free course and start exploring some of the other ways that I help you practice placement like this. 
But if we can learn how each one of these feels, we can let each one happen as well. how that's cleaned up at the end. Jesus Christ! Nasal at the end. Christ! But he cleans it up there at the end. Clean. Tries. That's a fun drill too. So much here. Tries, try, try bouncing your voice. Uh, 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 uh. Try it without pitch first, and get that. Uh, 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 uh. It's a, it's diaphragm control, really. Airflow control, a function really more of blending compression with support, not just pushing differently. Notice it gets a little brighter. It's not just tries. That sounds dumb. Tries. That's more subtle because I'm at the same time I'm injecting support. I'm holding back and moderating my compression as well. Back to the intro. Thanks for watching, listening, and going through this with me. I hope you have fun experimenting with your own voice and all the possibilities here. I've left a couple links below for sort of next steps videos if you want to explore uh, distortion and placement in greater detail. And again, if you're interested in going way deeper with me, click the link below and join my free voice course. Thanks so much.